Hi everyone and welcome to stage 7 of this 7 stage walk between Glasgow and Ben Nevis, the highest point in the United Kingdom. This is by far the shortest of the stages at just 11 kilometres, or just under 7 miles, but it does involve climbing Ben Nevis, and that's at a height of 1,345 metres, or 4,412 feet. Now I've checked online, and the summit is completely clear of cloud. We are in for a spectacular day of hiking. Apparently the summit of Ben Nevis is shrouded in cloud five days out of seven. Today is going to be a really good day. That's why the path is going to be so busy. Down in Fort William at sea level, 25 degrees Celsius. It should be about 13 degrees cooler on the summit. So I'm prepared for a little bit of chill. I've walked this track once before, back in 1986. I know what you're thinking, you can't be that old. You don't look it, notes below. Um, they were in the days when I was a lot younger and a lot fitter. This could be a challenge though. It shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. This part of the track is called the Pony Track. It was developed in the late 1800s to assist Victorian travellers to the summit. Prior to this, the path which led up to the summit led from Lochy Bridge, which is about two miles north of Fort William. And if my eyes are sharp enough, I'll point it out to you when we pass. I've noticed one thing on this trail. Having walked the West Highland Way in five stages, People heading in the opposite direction always say hello to you. Not on this, they don't. I think there's a lot of day trippers, not a lot of serious hikers, and that's why they haven't quite, quite learnt the interpersonal skills that you soon pick up when you're walking the West Highland Way. I've said hello to a few people until I realised I was just getting a grunt back from them. And that's when I realised, nah, don't bother saying hello to people on the West Highland Way. I must say that this part of the walk is in a lot better condition than I remember it back in 1986. There was a really bad erosion problem on the lower parts of the, the walk and the John Muir Trust, who are responsible for the maintaining of this path, have done an absolutely excellent job at keeping control of erosion. If you've been following this adventure from stage one, thank you very much. Your presence and your subscription, oops, did I mention subscriptions? Your subscriptions are spurring me on. Yeah, this is tougher than I thought it was going to be. But then I am not quite, but almost double the age I was when I last did this. You do the maths. Once you get towards the tree line, there's not a lot of shade available to you, so you have to make the most of it while you can. While I'm here, I want to show you a coincidence. 
last night in the local newspaper that Google Maps updated for safer routes on Ben Nevis. And in fact, it wasn't a local, it was a Glasgow newspaper. Apparently there had been a lot of people following Google Maps, parking away down there and trying to find their way up the shortest route. Now even the mountain rescue people say you shouldn't try that route at all because even for experienced hikers it's dangerous. Apparently they've now removed it from their maps. Now if you've been watching this channel for some time, you may have noticed that from time to time I'm a little bit critical about uh, Google Maps. I always use Ordnance Survey which are updated and released by the UK government 100% correct, 100% correct, 100% of the time. Google Maps, a bit hit and miss. I would never use Google Maps in the UK if you're hiking, that's for sure. Right, less talking, more walking. Well, that's Ben Nevis up there. It's a bit of a false summit, you can't see the actual top, but it's behind that. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to uh, prepare for the ascent of Ben Nevis, you've got to get used to walking stairs, because this is nothing but stairs since leaving the, uh, the pasture land at the bottom. One stair, one step after another, continuous. And guess what? On the West Highland Way, those sort of muscles don't get much exercise. Oh boy. Well, I hate to say it, but Ben Nevis has won. I got to within five and a half kilometers of the summit and I couldn't take it anymore. Over the last six stages, I've been carrying a lot of water and I hadn't realized it at the time, but it was putting a strain on my back. And after I finished stage six, I was in agony. So I waited a little while before doing stage seven, thinking that my back would repair itself. Obviously not. Today's a very, very warm day. Loads of water, loads of weight being carried up Ben Nevis. And that's my back, very, very sore. And I really don't want to risk it anymore. Another problem is the fact that my legs just are not coping with this. Now, I used to run 10k once a week from my office in the centre of Glasgow to my hometown of Paisley. And I stopped doing it for six months. And then I started again and I could not get the strength in my legs. It's as if it had just gone. And I just cannot get that strength back in my legs. The strength I used to have. Now they say you lose something like 1.4% of your muscle strength per year once you reach the age of 40. But I lost it like that. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting old, but I'm not that old yet. God, I've just finished the West Highland Way. Anyway, I'm heading back down again, as long as the jelly legs hold up. can't express to you how disappointed I am that I couldn't make it. I walked all the way from the banks of the River Clyde in Glasgow and the legs gave up. Five and a half kilometres from the summit, I cannot believe that. I usually watch these programmes on TV like uh, SAS Who Dares Wins and the staff say it's not in the legs, it's in the head. It's in the head. You try telling that to my legs. Absolutely gutted. And I'm looking forward to seeing the view as well. Apparently it is spectacular. Ah oh, well, I guess I'm gonna to have to wait until I build a cable car to the top, aren't I? If that ever happens. If you've been following this video from the start, you would have seen me struggle on two other stages. Uh, stage number two, when I was trying to climb up Conic Hill, that was 300 and something meters high. 
Uh, I struggled up the Devil's Staircase, which was 580 meters high. So you might say the writing was on the wall. I was always going to struggle with Ben Nevis. But with those two walks, I thought it was because I'd walked 20 kilometers just to reach the start of the climb. No, obviously not, because I made it to the uh, about 550 meters, and then the legs just gave way. And the legs were fresh because it's only a three kilometer walk from uh, Fort William. So I'm going to have to reassess my future walks. Try and keep them that way, try to avoid that way. And I guess that means I'm going to have to give up on my lifelong dream of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, it was about seven years ago, uh, my employer was looking for a volunteer to walk Mount Kilimanjaro for charity. And I, would, I the winner would be joining a number of other people. And I put in a really good video application. This is way before the days of my YouTube channel. And I thought, this video kicks ass. Uh, it ticked all the boxes, it pulled a few heartstrings. Nah. I, got, I was a finalist, but I didn't actually win it. And that was probably the closest I've ever come to getting to Mount Kilimanjaro. As it turned out, the guy who won the, the trip to Tanzania did the, the claim and then promptly left the company after 12 months. I stuck around for another seven years. Ways the justice. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this um, rather shorter video than I was expecting. I am truly gutted. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Please subscribe, please give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. So, so gutted.